Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Ross here, and welcome to another episode of Ultimate General Civil War, and our first proper battle being the Battle of First Bull Run that took place on 21 July 1861, where the Confederate Army deployed in a defensive position around the Bull Run River to guard the Manassas Railroad Junction. And a little history lesson for you is the Union Armies and the Confederate Armies named their battles the same battle differently. The Union Army would would always name theirs predominantly after major waterways and that's why it's called the first bull run as the bull run river the confederates would name their battles after the towns or cities located near them and that's why they would be calling this the battle of manassas since it's the manassas railroad junction just a little history lesson for you before we get started and let's get down into the battle and here we are on the battlefield and we can see that the Union Army is coming from multiple different directions. They want me to defend different hilltops and then they go over it again. We have to guard some fording opportunities across rivers as well as a stone bridge. And I know that this is really fast, but this is a 17 minute block of the actual battle itself. And it's 17 minutes that's from an actual video that's nearly an hour long. So this is sped up three times or 300% of its normal value. What you see me doing right now is moving my regiments forward to protect the stone bridge and then also detaching some skirmishers. My first set of skirmishers is going due north where my other set of skirmishers is going due west and actually you would say probably north by northwest to kind of just scout out and make sure that we are not going to get flanked and then also that we have that fording opportunity right to our north is guarded. Our artillery has opened up now that we have sights on the 1st Ohio and the 2nd New York, both ranked at 1,200 strength, and ours guys are pretty much in a good defensive position. And this is actually going to be kind of the highlights of this kind of battle right here is this bridge in the beginning. This is a multiple phase different battle, and this first phase here is defending the stone bridge. And... The defensive setup I have right here, one, is very well for me right now. It's it's working good. It's not so good for the Union forces trying to cross the bridge, but not to uh, really say, you know, how do you say, criticize the Union AI general, but they're not being very aggressive either. Um, we do have equal forces here. Then actually I have the numerical uh, advantage. Uh, as you can see that I have over 1,200 and nearly 1,500 with one army, and those are all at 1,200 even. Uh, and my artillery right now is just decimating the uh, one Union regiment. We have some re reinforcements that we need to send to the hill to our western flank, uh, because the western flank is really going to become of major importance. If we lose this western flank, uh, well... It's not good for us. And there are my uh, little scouts there. The uh, detachment that I already put out earlier has scouted the new uh, Union regiments that have come in. The other one is scouting the Ford. And, well, it saw the cavalry trying to get across. And now these skirmishers are running away. And that very high-pitched uh, kind of bugle call. Oh, here they come across the bridge. And they rout. That uh, they've already lost over 200 soldiers just being attempting near that and my skirmishers have been destroyed But they have done their job as they delayed the Union advancement on that west side on that western front To let our cannons and our regiments get into position in a defensive position the best they can now I don't have any really defenses on this road which could be a disadvantage for me I would, if I had more regiments over there, I would like to extend kind of more northwards to actually cover that road, but I don't think I really am ever going to have that in this battle. And we can see multiple different regiments are trying to cross that bridge, but those three are really holding up very well. So that new reinforcement one, I'm moving over to my western front as well as the supplies. And I know that this is very fast, but it, it just, it ha it's how it has to be. And I hope that you can kind of bear with it. If it is too fast, please let me know in the comments. I'll slow it down. It just, I don't know how I'm going to talk for 30 minutes about the, the troops just firing over and over again. But the stone bridge is doing very well. We can see that we have multiple units that have already lost over 200 soldiers each, and but they have new reinforcements, the K's Regiment, that has 2,500. 
that is a lot of freaking troops in one regiment. And actually, they have the ability to get over 2,500 since they're at 2,509. Second Ohio Routes Ks is sitting there. I tried to move my regiments just a little bit fur uh, further in so all three of them can fire on Ks at the same time. I don't know if that was a good decision. I'm taking unnecessary casualties at this point. And holy crap, the western side, is they're charging. And Hampton is not going to do very well in this. I, I manually retreated them, which is something I would like, like to talk about right now. There's two different options that you can do to, to retreat your forces. You can actually hit the, the button called fallback. When you hit the button fallback, your troops will actually face forward and fire and then kind of walk backwards. It is a little bit slower, but then you don't get that rear flanked uh, option that you see so many times, that little warning that pops up on my screen. You can manually do it, but then all your guys are going to be running backwards and getting shot in the back, and then they're going to be taking more casualties. So one is faster, but you'll take more casualties. The other one is slower, but you'll take less casualties and less uh, morale damage. Um, my mistake is I almost always can't wait for that uh, option to fall back slowly. And I freak out and I grab my troops and I move them back rapidly. And that's a massive mistake on my part because I'm just too worried about a charging unit or they're losing morale or whatever the case be on the tactical situation on the battlefield. I start freaking out and I move them back too soon or I don't hit that uh, fall back button so they can fall back on their own. But nonetheless, here comes more. There's three different regiments that are charging. Somehow I got uh, Barto here to kind of uh, solidify his morale and he's standing on his ground, which is very needed right now. And the supply wagon I'm trying to move forward to get those cannons resupplied, but they're getting attacked on their right flank my cavalry and I am doing everything possible to hold on to this. I have one, two, three, uh, three, four uh, regiments right now. And nearly 2,000 strength on each one. Oh no, that's five, five regiments on that western flank. The two, my three. And I'm, it's, I'm trying desperately to hold on to this at all costs. And it's definitely gonna cost me a lot. And I have Hampton's Legion is already down to 500 right here. And we're desperately, here comes a full on charge by 1,900 soldiers. My general has to run away. I have two regiments in uh, melee right here, and we now thankfully get to withdraw. I held out to the very last minute, and in the nick of time, the next phase starts, and it's very thankful for us because there's no way I was going to hold on to that hilltop for a minute longer. Silence falls over the battlefield as I make some precious last minute retreat options for my troops, and I do have the battle paused at this moment between the different phases. The reason being is I really have to make some solid defensive lines in this next retreat option to defend this hill to our rear. But I could possibly lose a lot of troops here, so I'm trying to use my general to the western front to rally those troops to get them back. I'm trying to get my cannons out there because cannons are expensive, very expensive, and I do not want to lose a single one of them. But Hampton's Legion is in the thick of it. It's severely outmanned, like at like five to one ratio outmanned up there in the farm and I don't know if he's going to make it out. I'm desperately trying to just give my troops the this little bit of time frame to get out and now I have given them the order to retreat. I don't know if they make it out though but we have reinforcements on their way and Hampton's Legion has now disintegrated and they're lost forever. Losing a unit is absolutely devastating. Just one unit, and I lose cavalry units throughout this gameplay series over and over again. And I have to say, like, it is really devastating when you have to make a new unit when you already made it the battle before. When you make a brand new regiment and then the next battle you lose it, it definitely hits you, even as a player. And this is a video game. When you make this brand new regiment and you spend so much money and so much manpower just to lose it all, but it definitely hurts. It hurts you tactically and for the battle, but it hurts you strategically for the war as well, because that's more money that you have to put out. It's weapons that you lost. It's just all in all, you know, all around, just a very bad thing. 
Now, talking about bad things, this right here is not a bad thing. I am making a one hell of a defensive line here. We can see my lines are all being put into cornfields. Cornfields is cover. Now, cover is not necessarily like a like hard cover. This is more like it would be con called concealment in the army. But nonetheless, it means that our troops are harder to hit. I'm putting it in them into the tree line, which actually could be hard cover because they could actually be standing behind a tree. But nonetheless, their defensive value is very high. The first Union Regiment to go over gets actually just entirely wrecked, the second Ohio. But somehow, Kays is like to my south. I'm trying to move my cavalry down there to try to do something, but the, uh, the cavalry does not work how I think it works. However, I think it works is not the way that this game thinks it works. So I have to move a regiment to the south. They're not going to engage. They're just going to sit in the wood line and just keep an eye on that regiment to see what the hell they do. My other regiment there is just running away and I don't know what they're doing. But nonetheless, it's getting so hectic now. I have to take a pause and get a good kind of bearing on the battlefield. After a good bearing on the battlefield, I restart uh, the clock. I have all my artillery guns to try to focus every single regiment that pushes forward. If they push across the river, I want every single artillery battery firing on them. This will damage their uh, morale and also obviously take numbers and let, make them a little bit less strong. And we can see here, I'm just trying to use this cavalry regiment to do the proper cavalry thing is, that's called scouting. We're trying to scout everything possible. Scout where the artillery uh, batteries are, the enemy supply truck is somehow, and for some reason, crossing the river. And I'm trying to argue right now, do I try to charge in there and grab the supplies, or should, uh, am I going to get wrecked by the artillery? Um, and my artillery is engaging the really strong unit over there to my le uh, left flank. The left flank has a multiple units over there, and I, I'm a little concerned about it. I charge in my cavalry to try to grab this unit, the supply unit, but I can't because it's in the river. And for some reason, my cavalry do not want to go in said river. Uh, now, every single unit here, there's a 2,000 regiment, there's 1,500 man regiment, there's multiple regiments over to my left flank. And I'm severely outmanned over there. But the position I have right now with this kind of rough U shape is just absolutely helping. And I finally get that uh, supply wagon. And now I just need to get that cavalry unit out of there before they get wrecked by artillery fire. But this uh, kind of awkward U shape, um, and I would say probably upside down U if you're looking at the screen right here, is helping me kind of establish a defensive element so I can guard both fording avenues actually three fording avenues that the Union troops can take and also gives me the high ground and also gives me as much cover as possible. Now this is a kind of entered into the third phase which is called counterattack. I get a shit ton of troops from all different directions and now I can kind of close in one on the troops that are behind on my southern flank just doing nothing. But the Union now also kind of takes notice of my opportunity to counterattack and they charge pretty much everything in here it seems. We can see two different units of regiments, uh, infantry regiments, moving on my right flank. We can see one, two, three, four, five, six moving on my left flank. And I'm trying to move my uh, southern units into just straight charge with Ks just to take them out. And we can see I am literally committing, uh, what is that, four, five different regiments into there. Anything. But they're moving something more onto that left flank. And I want to move Smith over there just to into those cornfields to kind of counter that move. And this southern battle right here between the like four regiments and the cavalry lasts actually a while. Kays is lasting, and they just fell under a thousand now strength. And I'm trying to kind of just handle all these different things that are happening. Kays is falling under 600, and now they absolutely dismembered them. And, but that took a lot of time. That was this is running at three times speed. Do remember that? And that took a good a couple minutes there to get them. Second New York has come out of the woodwork, and now we're going to try to use this southern uh, flank to attack them and then also charge into the second Ohio as well. And the more units that we absolutely crush and decimate here, the better, because we're gonna be able to really secure this right flank, this eastern flank of these lines. We're gonna be able to secure the fords. We're gonna be able to take out these artillery guns, maybe even capture some of the artillery actual cannons themselves, not the regiment the, or the battery per se, but at least capture the guns and get reinforcements for our guns and our batteries after the battle.
if you take notice to our left flank, we are pretty much holding them pretty much still in those cornfields. And our uh, kind of right flank here, we are charging all these artillery batteries. And now we have to accurately and appropriately reassign those units that were in the south over to our left flank before all those units kind of get overrun. Uh, they're, they've been holding out pretty well, but they are getting weak here. 500 strength for the 5th uh, YA, 860 something for the one unit. So we definitely want to add some reinforcements to there. And that's what these uh, different units are down here for. We're going to move the cavalry up there. Could actually regret this though, as we all know that cavalry does not very, last very long in my armies because I get a little bit too bold and too ambitious with them. Moving one of these newer units, that left flank, to reinforce that flank and the other units kind of more to the north of western to kind of just re uh, secure those two different fords over there. I don't know why they have a unit so far down to the, our south and west, but they definitely are trying to kind of like sneak behind our lines almost. There's some cavalry unit that is uh, sitting in the water, but they're not alone there. As we move forward here, we see that there is a Sherman here with 1500 strength. And well, we have a pretty sizable force sitting on this side of the river. So now, for some reason, the second VA, the second Virginia force, has moved a little bit way too forward. And we are trying to move our generals a little bit forward to kind of offer that boost in morale to make sure they do not go running. And since everyone else is running away from us, let's move our troops forward and push to at least the banks of the rivers. As I look up here, I'm trying to actually look for my fucking goddamn cavalry. Where are they? Who fucking knows? But in the meantime of me looking over to the left flank, uh, my cavalry has disappeared. Where did those 190-ish guys go? No idea. No idea. But alas, they are definitely 100% without a doubt gone. And that makes me sad because it's just another, you know, cavalry regiment I have to recruit from nowhere. And that really kind of hurts me too is because I don't get to build any experience with the cavalry because I always lose them. I'm absolutely horrible cavalry. I do not pay attention to them enough. I do not uh, estimate their strength and weaknesses as appropriate as I do with infantry regiments. And what, for whatever reason, I do not kind of handle them with care that they probably need. As this battle comes to an end though, we can see here we have 17 minutes in game time, and it's not even game time, this is just the fake in game time, but very few minutes left here, and I decided not to cross that river and kind of hold on this side of the river, and that's what I'm kind of doing, except for this northern area right here, I decided I'm going to move all these regiments kind of really rapidly over here to kind of disintegrate these units as fast as possible. I'm keeping Smith and Clark though on this side of the river and let the Union troops kind of come to us if they need to or want to. Um, but here we're getting these two units to rout. We have Sherman here that showed his face yet again, but he is routed and now the battle is over. Oh, almost over. Um, we are, we could finish it seems, and I didn't for whatever reason. Uh, I guess I wanted to kill Willbox. Now, I have to say, I don't think there's anything more you get for killing anything except for taking more casualties. You might get more infantry equipment, but it's minuscule. You might get more rewards, but minuscule. And we're back into normal time here, and we can see all the different kills here and our officers. But let's see kills. 1,100 kills to 300 losses, 1,700 to 600. Uh, artillery got 1,000 kills. We're only losing 22. Great work by us. Great work indeed we're going to choose just confederates here and just kind of see what the top units are um yeah look, look at all those thousands 969 to 368 loss not too bad a whole bunch of officers promoted a whole bunch wounded a sadly a brigadier general was wounded as well but no killed in action which is always good and look at all those goods we rescued uh, uh, what 2000 springfields Great times, great times indeed. Uh, 969 supplies, 4,500 reboard farmers. Excellent. And now we're loading back in for 83 prisoners. We exchanged for 83 additional recruits. We've earned $162,000. We got the Thomas Jackson as a general, and we gained a plus one in army organization. So we got an extra core. 
uh, 10 reputation, which helps us buy things actually from the government, I guess you would say. And this is where I make a mistake, is I actually create a new core. I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend, when you get a new core, do not make a new core yet. Reinforce the core that you actually have, because you cannot send two cores in the battle. You can't. You could, maybe later, but in the beginning, definitely in the games that I've played, in the battles i played, you cannot send two cores at the same time. You can send one core and up to whatever brigades are allowed. So, like, one battle, you can send ten brigades, but still, you have to select whatever core that you want. And so, I highly, sure. again, highly, highly recommend reinforce the core then that you actually have and make it as strong as possible before you make another core. You can see here's my issue. I have made two regiments and now I'm increasing them to 2,000 strength each into a core with Thomas Jackson that I will not be able to field effectively in any battle that's upcoming. Now, I could have added a new division and added those 2,000 soldiers into there and making it a whole lot stronger. So the money that I put out to put those units in the other core, into second core, has been necessarily wholeheartedly wasted. I increased their supply, I increased everything with that core, and looking back at that, that is a major, major mistake. Don't make the mistake I did. Definitely add as many divisions into your first core as possible before you make a second core at all. Make sure it's absolutely filled with the best things that you can afford, with the best weapons you can purchase or steal or capture from the enemy, and as many men as you possibly can fit in. If you can fit in a higher mount unit with a little bit lesser quality weapons, definitely do it. Men always, always, always out equals weapons and that's just my opinion if people can disagree with me on that fact but i can definitely say if you have 2000 men and you have a slightly less uh, effective weapon than a unit that has 1500 men i can guarantee the 2000 man unit will somehow some way always win and i say minutely uh, despairable weapon that it's just slightly if you choose the crappiest weapon yes you're definitely not going to be able to fa face an enemy that is about one half to one and maybe two thirds your size if they have a, just an amazing weapon system but nonetheless i highly recommend making your first core as strong as possible and as this episode comes to a close, we can see that our campaign area has changed. We have an ambush mission, we have a stay alert mission, and a mission called Shiloh, which is actually a very famous battle. Also, the year has progressed. We're in 1862 on the Western Front, and we can see what we can do for our next mission and our next episode, which will be the Ambush Convoy. As always, though, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit that thumbs up. It means a lot to me. Definitely helps my channel out. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think about this episode and the series. Was it too fast? Could I keep it the same, or do you want me to change it up? As always, though, I'm The Flying Ross, and I'll check you guys next time.